Galloway's Support Through Sight Loss. Galloway's Get Active presents Withnall Nature Reserve. Hello everyone, it's James and Jane here again with another of the Galloway's audio described video walks. Today we're at uh, Withnall Nature Reserve, a place I've never been to before so it's going to be a walk of discovery for us and we're going to take you on the walk, show you around. It's round about two and a half to three miles in length. Not sure what we're going to find because like I say I've never been here um, so it's going to be a discovery walk for me as well as you guys. So we're just located uh, just outside Abbey Village, um, round about a five mile drive from Junction 3 of the M65. There is parking on the road, um, so let's get going, see what we can find and we'll show you what we can see along the way. Well, let's go. Whistnell Local Nature Reserve, which was originally the railway line from Cherry Tree to Chorley, which was seven miles long. Originally, it was built to transport coal from the Wigan coalfield to the mills of East Lancashire, without the need to go the long way around via Preston. Work started on the line on the 2nd of August 1866 and included major civil engineering works over the River Roddlesworth between Fenniscoles and Abbey Village. The line was opened on the 1st of November 1869 and was owned and run jointly by the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway and the London North Western Railway. It was built by William Hansen at a cost of 530,000, around 34 million in today's money. Passenger service was withdrawn in 1960 and the line was eventually dismantled in 1967 with the link to Chorley being severed on the 10th of November 1968 with the demolition of the viaduct over the Leeds Liverpool Canal at Botany Bay. Brinskill Station was demolished and Withnall Station was sold off. The land was acquired by Chorley Borough Council in 1971. The railway cutting provides a valuable bird-rich habitat due to the dense cover of the woodland and scrub offering an excellent roosting and nesting territory. Whilst on your walk here, keep a lookout and listen out for wrens, great tits, blue tits and long-tailed tits, blackbirds, song thrush and chaffinch, which are all here in the local area. The abundance of the berries and insects allow the birds to forage for food all year round. This is a flat walk through a valley, which was the old railway line, and occasionally along the path there's some notice boards, which is where Jane is reading from. Woodland habitat. The woodland throughout the site is semi-mature, having grown and developed since the closure of the railway in 1966. The trees provide shelter, roosting and foraging habitat for birds and bats. It also provides excellent shelter and hibernation potential for small mammals and amphibians. A wide range of invertebrates such as beetles, woodlice, centipedes and millipedes can be found, especially those associated with trees and deadwood. If you look carefully, you may see a tawny owl in the tree canopy. This is quite a dark area of the nature reserve with the closely growing trees and heavy ivy, which is brightened up in spring and summer with beautiful wildflowers such as bluebells, red campion and foxglove. So we carry on following the path and we go under an old railway bridge. We're now showing a close-up of a jackdaw, which is a member of the crow family. It's black with grey head and cheeks and neck and it's got a bright pale blue eye. Pond and stream habitat. The pond and stream are seasonal, meaning that water levels change according to the weather. The stream runs through the length of the reserve and flows into the pond, whose main purpose is to act as a silt trap. Silt is carefully moved from the pond on occasion to create deeper hollows for aquatic invertebrates. The pond provides a potential breeding site for amphibians such as frogs and newts. The stream feeding the pond provides an ideal foraging habitat for common songbirds and you will often see thrush and blackbirds bathing in the shallow water. 
video is just showing some marsh marigolds, which is a yellow buttercup type flower. And there's a female chaffinch in the stream. It's, uh, I think it's hunting for little insects or maybe having a drink. It's a small sparrow sized bird. The male is pinks and greys, the female is brown. So we carry on following the path. You've got embankments on both sides covered in trees of various species. Now there's a, a roe deer up on one of the banks, which is one of the UK's deer. It's a, a mid size brown, um, bigger than a, a large dog with a, a white rump patch. You can see a lot of midges flying in front of it as well. It's just going to settle down and, and rest for the day. Now showing a close up, you can see its, its ears twitching and its head looking around for any type of danger. The rest of it is hidden by the, the scrub and the trees. It's really amazing to be able to see a deer at the time of day that we were, which was around about 11am. Dry Heath Grassland Habitat The dry heath grassland on the railway bankings provides nesting and foraging habitat for common songbirds, as well as supporting a range of invertebrates including butterflies and moths. The open grasslands are ideal hunting grounds for predators such as kestrels, weasels and stoats. In the spring and summer months, this area is a hive of activity with birds singing and if you watch the heather and gauze carefully, you may see birds flitting back and forward, nesting and feeding young. Listen carefully and you may hear the constant buzz of bees on the heather. The trees and bramble are managed to allow the heathland to flourish by selective felling and scrub removal. Just showing a patch of primroses and there's some pale yellow ones, some pink and some deeper reddy purple coloured ones with yellow centres. Now there's a dunnock high up in the tree, we've got some leaf buds about to open. The dunnock is also known as the hedge sparrow. It's about the size of a sparrow with uh, grey on its head and mainly brown in colour. Species rich grassland habitat. The grassland is abundant with wildflower species which like wet conditions. These range from marsh marigold and primroses in spring to oxeye daisy, ragged robin and purple loose strife in summer. The wildflower meadows give way to coarse grass, tall herb vegetation such as creeping thistle, bramble and stinging nettle on the former railway bankings. This is ideal habitat for moths and butterflies, abundant on warm sunny days. Fruit trees brighten the site with beautiful blossom in spring and then in summer and early autumn are heavily laden with plums and apples. In late summer the grassland and wildflowers die back and drop seeds that germinate to renew the meadow for next spring. The meadows are cut in September and arisings removed to avoid nutrient build up in the soil. There's a little blue tit in a hawthorn tree. You've got the bright green of the new hawthorn leaves and the small blue tit, which is bright yellow chest, blues and greens on its back. So if we follow the path, we come to a, a bench and there's a, a side trail that you can take that leads up onto one of the embankments. So we just go up the steps now. They are quite steep and there is a handrail on the right hand side. So if you do go up, just be careful. Once at the top, you've got views looking out to the hills in the distance um, and looking over the tops of the trees of the, the nature reserve that we're walking on. Brilliant sunshine. Log and habitat piles. Several species of birds, including blackbirds and wrens, use log and habitat piles for nesting and breeding. 
Lots of insects live on rotting wood for part or all of their life cycle. Stag beetles lay their eggs underground, near dead wood or logs. The larvae live in this wood for several years until they reach maturity, so leaving the wood pile undisturbed is vital. A great place to build a log pile is next to a pond. It provides a safe refuge for frogs, toads and newts and will increase the survival rate for these species as well as providing an ideal hibernation site for hedgehogs and a perfect hunting ground for small mammals. Up to a dozen species of birds including robins and willow tits use log piles for nesting and breeding. Wrens and robins eat small insects and build their nests out of mosses which grow in log piles. Fungi live on different species of wood, so using a variety of logs is a good idea. Fungi help recycle the rotting wood, breaking it down for other small invertebrates. The fungi are eaten by other wildlife such as slugs and snails. Building a log pile will make your garden wildlife friendly. It is so easy, just a few logs in a shady area under a tree will start a new home. I'm now showing a, a song thrush up in a tree. It's about the size of a blackbird, maybe slightly smaller. It's got a cream coloured breast with brown spots on it. Can't really miss its uh, high pitched song. And it's got a brown back. So we keep following the path, we eventually come to a pond on the right hand side. I think there is a path that goes all the way around but it does look quite muddy and unsuitable for walking really. This pond, the fishing rights on this pond is owned by Whitten Langling Club. So we keep following the path, keeping the pond on our right hand side. There are a couple of benches and eventually we come out of the woodland and it starts to open up and become more grassy in places. And this path will eventually bring us out to the main road in Brinskill. So we've got blue sky, white fluffy clouds got the trees that are just starting to come out into leaf. It's a really nice path this, it's, it's very firm, it's flat and, and really good for walking on. So we're just coming out onto the main road at Brinskill where we turn round and walk back to the car at Abbey Village. Okay everybody, so that was a, a nice walk through Withnall Nature Reserve. Lovely little nature reserve. You can walk all the way through to Brinskull, which was at the end. And in Brinskull there's a, a nice little, uh, what was an old mill lodge, with ducks and geese on and there's some benches there. It'd be nice to have a picnic. And then you can just follow the path and walk all the way back, which is what we're doing now. So all in all, it's probably around about two and a half to three miles. Uh, you've heard about some of the different sorts of wildlife and nature that can be seen in the area. And it looks like it would change regularly throughout all the seasons. You've seen some of the, the early flowers that we've managed to find, the blossom and some marsh marigolds. Uh, you've seen a jackdaw and some of the other bird song. There's plenty of bird song all the way through the, the video you've probably heard. So, lovely little walk. If you fancy doing it, give me a call. I can give you more information. The number is 01772 744 148. And hopefully we'll see you on a walk shortly. So, thanks for watching. Stay safe. Look after each other. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.